welcome to my creative year. Um, I'm not going to do an actual page per se this month, but what I'm going to do is talk to you about passion. Um, this, I know you guys know I'm an art journaler. I love doing that. This is my other passion, and this is actually what I call my glass house. Let me get you guys in here. Gonna take a second. Welcome to, all you're seeing right now is a door, I'm sorry. All right, welcome to my glass house. Got a couple steps here, and we're gonna step in. All right, so, this is my other passion. This is stained glass, bead making, and kiln work. Let me turn on some lights in here. You guys can look around at the mess. Okay, so this passion started, oh God, I can't tell you how many years ago, lots. Um, I actually had my work at one point put into um, a little shop called Cooper Country. Cooper Country Crafts, it was right outside of Doubleday Field in um, Cooperstown, New York. But anyways, um, this here is my kiln. I make um, pendants, dichroic glass. I'll show, these are ones that have been started. I haven't put them all together yet. This is how all the pendants, like this, let me get over here, like this. How they begin is just like this. They're just little squares of glass and little squares of clear glass on top of them and I put them in the kiln and I fuse them. All right, so that's just one little thing I play with. Uh, let me see if I can find some more. Um, these are also from the kiln. These are pieces that I have fused together and then what I'll do with these is I will actually take them and make them into necklaces and I'll show you those also. Um, here's some regular pendant. Oops, sorry guys. I'm new at this holding on the camera thing. Um, there's a pendant. Here's another pendant that actually has some copper wire in it. Um, just odds and ends. Okay, this one here. I just did a bunch of clear glass too. Now, uh, just to answer a couple of questions, this video is going to be a little bit long because I know people are going to ask questions and I'll try to answer them before I get them. Um, in order to fuse the glass, uh, you have to use a different type of glass. You cannot use regular stained glass, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, let's see. Back to the kiln. The kiln has its own type of glass. And it depends on the efficiency of it melting, okay? So you can't take regular stained glass like you see in a stained glass window. That's a totally different glass. Oh, they call it COE, and I, for the life of me right now, I can't remember what it stands for. But it's the rate of it, how it melts. Now, this is dichro glass. Um, I'm going to tell you guys, if you ever think about starting in this bin business, have a lot of money because this glass is very expensive. Um, I have, let me just give you an idea. Let me see. This, this piece of glass, which is dichro, so what that means is it'll change colors in the light. This piece of glass was like 20 bucks, 28 bucks when I bought it many, many years ago. So now I don't even know what you would pay for a piece of this glass. I gotta get up. Ouch. Um, so if you ever, sorry guys, I'm hitting the floor. I'm trying to put that away. If you ever decide to get into fusing of glass, be prepared to spend some money, okay? I also have molds down below that I can actually, um, what they call slump. I can take big pieces of glass, which are back there in the back, right? There's my finger right there. That's the bigger pieces of glass that I can actually slump into different molds and make bowls and plates and that kind of thing. All right, so that's my kiln. It's a tabletop kiln. Um, it's old, but it works, and it works great. 
All right, so that is um, my kiln. Actually, let me show you some of the necklaces that I made with the fused glass. So these are necklaces. These are necklaces. <laughs> necklaces that I take a piece of fused glass and then I wire it and play with it and make it into necklaces. Like right here, this one. I enjoy doing these. These are fun. Um, to me, they're very relaxing to do. I can just, sorry, I'm going sideways on you. I can just sit here and play with the wire and play with the glass and just have fun. This is one of my beads. You can't really see because it's not in the sunlight. Hope you guys can see this better than I can. But here's one of my beads that I just kind of put on a, a necklace. Um, this one is just a little square pendant holder that I decided to add some dichro to it and just a few odds and end pieces. This is an earring. I think that was a stud of an earring. Um, and then I made it into a necklace. So that's the fun part. All right. Now we're going to talk about stained glass. Um, when you walk into my, my, my glass house, on the right hand side, this is the glass. I've got all different colors. I've got clears, browns, oranges, yellows, um, whites. Those are all solid glass and what I mean by solid is when you put it up to the window, it's solid. You don't really see much through it. All right, then I have greens, blues. This is for <laughs> right now because I don't have an air conditioner in here yet. Um, pinks and reds, these are all textured clears. And what I mean by that is when you look at it, it has a texture in it. Some of these are really, really cool. Let me show you another one here, hold on. Like this one. How cool is that? Isn't that cool? So anyways, this is the glass. Um, a lot of people think this type of glass is very fragile. It's not as fragile as you think it is. Um, the glass will take, um, it takes time to get used to how you can be with it instead of, um, you know, really being light touch with it. It's not as, it's not as, fragile it's not as fragile as, as a lot of people think it is okay down here this is my bevels um, some of you may not know what a bevel is so I'm just gonna show you this is a bevel oops where am I see it it actually has sides that are are um, slanted so that's a bevel all right there's all kinds of shapes and sizes here. Um, these are really cool to work with. They're a lot of fun to make things with. Um, those are all pretty much bevels. Down below that, whoops, you guys are looking at the sun, I'm sorry. Um, down below that, again, these are sheets of bevels. These are bevels. Those are um, night light holders. Uh, those are wine stopper um, pieces. I've got my foil, my solder, and then all of this stuff here is just all extras. That's the puppy dog jar because she comes out and hangs out with me. Of course my heater um, and a little tub of just extra stuff. Now that's my stained glass wall. Um, let me see if I can, can I bring you guys out? Nope, that's in. Oh, much better. All right, now, as I walk back toward my stained glass um, bench, these are some of the things that I've made and I have left over from the shop, okay? Let me back up, I'll go this way. All right, so I've just got them hanging here. Um, what am I gonna do with them? I have no idea. Probably just leave them hanging there. Um, this is a stained glass lampshade. I did not make that. However, I did make a stained glass lamp. It's in my house. Um, again, more stained glass projects, things that I've worked on, things that I've made. Okay. My angel. This is my angel um, that I can never sell or give away because she has a crack in her. And um, she's just beautiful. This is... 
me see if I can do it this way. This is my stained glass bench. I don't think that's going to work. Sorry, guys. I'm new to this, this holding on the video camera thing. This is where I cut my glass. Okay. I end up having to do a... Um, right here I do a grinding set then I do my soldering station so these pieces of glass have just undergone their final soldering and let's see if I can see her there she is I can't see if you could see her uh, it's hard to put her in the light but anyways you get to drift a um, couple things like I said a few things that I've just been working on this is all just kind of supplies, um, a lot of jewelry making stuff, a lot of chain, my tools. Again, just my tools, that kind of stuff is through here. This is my drawers for, um, these are all pieces that I can put stained glass on. Like the, right here, I would put a, um, a circle on that to make it. It's a, one of those magnetic um, holders. I've got barrettes in here. I've got just plain pendants that I can put little pieces of stained glass on. Um, bracelet. Here's a bracelet. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, more pendants. These are clips for your hair. And some of them are, are um, just pins. Pin backing. Another. So anyways, this is my supplies for that. Um, this is a little bit of wiring, jig, that kind of stuff. More wire. Um, this is actually the stretchy stuff, which I'm going to try to get rid of. This is some beads that I use. Here's some bunch of chain that I use. And more beads that I use. That's an empty can for me to just dump oils and that kind of stuff in. All right, let's go down here. Um, that's all cleaning supplies. I actually have forks and knives and um, paper plates and napkins down there. That's the rags I use. Down there is a whole bunch of chemicals um, and just a little jar, a uh, little, what do you call it, bowl that I use. This is where I keep my um, pieces of glass. So, like down here, I've got my reds. These are all small pieces. So these are actually red. I don't know if you can see that on camera. There's green. Here's orange. Got all my orange scraps. I've got my yellow. So everything's done by color on here. And these are all scraps. And how I use these is if I'm making a project, let's say like I was making that angel and she's done in red, if I broke a little piece and wanted to find another one, or as I'm cutting her and I have extra pieces left over, they go in here. All right, and then I use them up as scraps. Um, here on top is the bigger scraps that wouldn't fit in the little things down below, and there's all kinds of it. Um, you know, you got your clear glass, you've got your non-see-through glass. Now, see how I'm using this? It's not not as um, fragile. It's not as bad as people think, think it is. If I go out and drop this on a stone, yeah, it's going to break. But when you're sitting here doing stained glass and you're doing pieces, let's see if I can see her. There's your red. Um, it's not that bad. You can get cut. Yeah, I've been cut before. A few times. Like a hundred times. Um, which means we have band-aids and antibiotic ointment, blah, 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 and the shit. All right, so um, these are cutting tools, some of them. Pretty much what I do is I start with a pattern, and this is the pattern that I use for my angel. These don't have any patterns. These are just extra pieces of glass that were um, left over that I decided to put together in little, little frames, basically. This one I haven't put all together yet. Um, that is because I'm going to be painting the inside of this um, shed every color I've got under the roof. All right, here's a couple pieces I've done. Um, let me see if I can put it up here. This is the little boy, which I absolutely love. And this is my little girl, my country girl. 
So I have my country girl and boy. They used to hang in the front of our house up in uh, Cortland, and I'm not sure where to put them now, so they hang out down here. Um, in here is all my patterns and the books that I use to learn different stuff with. This thing. This is my grinder. And let me show you guys real quick how it works. All right, so I'm going to turn the light on on it. When you cut a piece of glass, you see how it's got all these... You can't cut without a tool. You can't cut a round circle in a piece of glass. You have to kind of do it in straight lines. You can do a little bit, but then you've got to stop, do a little bit more. So what happens is you end up with all these crooked lines. Now, um, I don't have enough water in there. Hold on. Let's see if that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. All right, so I've got water in my grinder. And now what I do is I turn it on. And you guys will see it's really, really low. All right. There's a little sponge here in the back that gets wet. That will keep... Whoops, back up. That will keep my um, grinder wet. And hold on, i got to put more water in it. Hold on. All right, so I put more water in my grinder. And now, as you can see, it's getting wet back here. There's a little brush on the back that goes against the diamond um, grinder bit. And the reason we have to have water on it is because if we don't, it's, it's going to burn up. It's not going to actually um, grind the glass. Now, when you're grinding glass... That's what it sounds like. Um, it's pretty simple to do. Not that difficult. Um, if somebody is uh, worried about getting their hands up and don't want to get their hands on, this tool, which I don't use it very often, only for little pieces, this tool, you can move your glass around. Okay? So that's how the grinder works. This, um, when you make stained glass, it's not a quick, easy, done process. It's many, many steps, multiple steps to make a piece of glass. All right, this here, and I'm not going to power this up, this is my um, bandsaw for glass. And again, we've got water. It, get, it takes water. Where's my light? Where's my light? can't remember. I just got this one. Oh, i got to turn it on to get my light. Hold on. All right, there's my light. Um, the way this works, same way a regular bandsaw would work, okay? Um, the band is right here. It's a diamond cut band, which means it's basically got diamond chips on it, and it works on water. It's a pulley, and then there's water down in the base of it. And what happens is when I cut glass, here I can cut any shape I want. I can cut a circle. I can cut, you know, an X into something. Anything I want, I can cut with this. Um, I used to have one of these before. It was called a Taurus. And um, when, I, when we moved, I ended up having to buy a new one. Um, so this one's actually a little bit better than what I had before. And this is a new grinder because my old one did not sound happy. Um, those paints down there, all those paints are going to be, thank you, Gina Ahrens. Um, all of those paints came out of her studio and my studio. And what I'm going to do is paint all the walls in here. So that hasn't been done yet. Uh, I have a light box. This is a panel that's broke. Um, I don't know if I'm going to fix it or not. We'll see. All right, now, this is my rollaway chair for my stained glass. Now we're going to get into bead making. Okay, this is my bead making station. Let me just put this up over here. It hangs up over here. All right, for my bead making station, first thing we've got is in the back. These are all glass rods, okay? Um, they're just a piece of glass put into a rod. They have a certain temperature, and I think mine are 90. A lot of people use 98. I use 90. Um, why? I don't know. That's just because what I started with. Um, so there's all these rods. There's a bunch of rods down there. And then up here are smaller ones. These are real thin, and this is what you do. Let me show you the difference. See the difference in them? Um, the big ones is what you do. What I use them for is the base of my beads. Sorry, guys. And then the little ones I use to um, decorate the beads with. 
Uh, let's see. No, I use 96. Sorry, I use 96. So back here are Fritz that I use. Frit is basically a ground up glass. That's all it is. Okay. They have it in different um, textures or chunks. Like this one. This one's a little bit bigger than that other green one. So this is something, basically what we do is we use it to melt in the glass, and I'll show you that in a second. Down here, this is um, bead release, and then of course my map gas tanks. Now, and there for safety is my fire, my fire, what do you call it? Uh, fire thing, extinguisher. Okay, this is my bead desk, and these are all really cool tools that you get to use when you're making beads. Basically what happens is I take a rod, which these ones are brand new, they haven't even been broke out yet. Hubs is cleaning my old ones. So I take one of these rods and I'll dip it into this bead release, okay? So I'll dip it in here and then I usually stand them right here to dry. I don't have any there right now because I haven't been out here for a while. Once they dry, then I use this glass I light my torch and one of these days I'll have to have my husband do a video showing you how I make these beads but I light my torch and then the biggest thing about me bead making that you have to understand is when you have here's one of my other ones he's cleaning up okay I've got bead release let's pretend on this you always have to keep see what my hands doing you always have to keep the rod moving. If you do not, what happens to melted glass? It's going to go right? So in order to make a bead, you've got to be able to keep this going. You're going to keep it heated, you're going to keep it in the fire, there's a, there's a process for it, I'm not going to get all into it. Then I'll take these large beads, let's say I want to have a green bead. Alright, you can see where it's melted on the end. I've already used this rod, and I'm sorry I'm shaking so bad. Let's see, here's another one. This one I've used and it's, you know, I've melted. So what I'll do is I'll put this on the rod. Keep it going, keep it spinning, right? The whole time it's on there. Then I'll take these smaller pieces and either put dots on the beads or make designs in them, whatever you wanna do. Okay, just so you know, I am safe with this stuff. Um, this is another kind of frit. Now let's say I've got a hot green bead on here and I want it all different colors. It's hard to do this with one hand. Oh, come on. I don't want to drop this. Hold on. Dang, that was hard to get open. All right, so these, this you will get cut on. This is little tiny shards. See how it's stuck on my finger? Little tiny shards of glass. So what I would do is I would take my mandala. Okay, I've got... Uh, my mandrel I should say I've got my hot bead I would put it in here and spin it and what it'll do is it'll pick up a bunch of this and just put it back up on the thing and it'll melt into the heat so this is a really kind of cool frit I use this quite often okay um, put that back all right these tools these are the tools that are out here on the desk are what I use the most this, if I want to hold a real tiny um, piece of glass, I will put it in this. It, it snaps closed. It's one of these dentist things. Um, and then I can use it on the heat. This is just a plain old steel knife. It's wonderful to put marks in on your um, beads. It's also great to smooth out a bead. It's a lot of fun. Um, this, again, I use it for marks in my beads. That's the sole purpose. Um, again, marks in the beads. You can put in holes. You can put in air bubbles, that kind of stuff. This is a flattener. So if I want to take my bead while it's hot and I want to flatten it, I can with these. This, I basically, um, when my bead gets really out of shape, I will take this flat. It's a granite, I want to say. No. Oh, I can't think of the name of the material. Um, but I use this to flatten out. I can actually take this, put it right up to the heat. Um, you know, I can be working my bead and working this as well. Of course, my safety glasses, don't forget those. This is a texture plate. 
again I can just take my hot bead roll it on it and I'll get this texture same with this one this is a texture plate um, this is mica powders that I can actually put um, onto the beads as well um, this is of course my mandrel holder this is another one this one makes um, circular beads this makes round beads okay over here I have a bunch of other stuff not a lot that I use in there um, more stuff that my husband uses to get beads off and that kind of stuff or if I want special um, if I want special marks on my beads all right these are old but these are some of the beads that I've made in the past um, actually is it better to put them in here Let's put them in here so here I took a big white piece there's the bead hole I took a big white piece I got a big bead and then I decided to put these little dots of all different colors on the bead so there's that one um, red dots on a white and black uh, let's see these are just round I don't know if you can see this just dots and then I've got these little nubbies on the sides of them um, this was I was working on a set of uh, Steeler beads. This is for the NFL basically um, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here's another one that I was making Which is black and yellow see this is what happens when you let your um, Glass just go and I did this on purpose because I wanted to see what type of a shape of a bead this would make You would think I can't make beads by the way my hands are shaking, but I actually can um here we go. This is a green one with white and orange dots. Uh, I like dots. Can you tell? <laughs> I'm sure you guys can't tell from my art, right? Um, another one with dots. So now, these are what I call fresh beads. These are stayed off, straight off the mandrel, okay? And what that means is if I decided to take these beads and put them on a keychain, and you hit, here's one with hearts on it upside down hearts let's go this way well little can you see it a lot of fun um, if I was to take these and put them on a keychain and send them to you and you hit them oh uh, you dropped them on the ground these are gonna bust and they're gonna bust quick now what you have to do to um, anneal the beads which means to melt them I put them in the kiln I melt them and I, I um, let the heat down at a very slow rate so they cool down very slowly and that anneals them and that means that they are now ready to use so these have all been annealed um, these are beads that I've played with you know this is a lot of these are when I started making beads I just haven't done anything to them yet um, it was a lot of play. I made little guys. Um, I had a fireman in here at one point. Oh, here he is. One-eyed fireman with a... Where'd he go? Here he is. One-eyed fireman with a flower on his hat. <laughs> I have no idea. So, yeah. this These beads now are ready for me to do anything with. I can put them on, um, you know, keychains. I can put them on ends of my journals that kind of thing There's one of the little flowers this one I made for my son and this is a leprechaun because he's Irish well we're Irish so he loves his Irish um, another one so yeah making beads is a lot of fun um, it's not easy work it takes a lot of concentration um, it takes a lot of um, the ability to multitask this one was cool. This one was done with that frit that I told you about, that I stick it down in while it's hot and it picks up all the pieces. That's what this looks like. So I'll just try and see if there's any more down in here. They're just cool. They're a lot of fun. I love making beads. All right, so anyways, enough about that. So this is my house. This is my glass house. Um... Eventually, I'm going to put fabric all along these the ceiling and just have it really pretty in here. Um, and like I said, I'm going to paint all the walls and that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing I have in here, you guys know I have a bad back. Yay! 
I have somewhere I can sit, I can lay, I can chill out and relax, okay? I also have a fridge, thank you Carla, that my friend Carla um, loaned to me so that I can have, you know, waters and sodas and that kind of stuff out here. I have my coffee maker, that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is my art house, my glass house. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Again, this is another one of my passions. I absolutely love spending time out here. Um, this is something I did not think I was ever going to do again. And thankfully, I did not sell all this stuff because at one point I was talking about getting rid of everything. And I'm really glad I didn't because now I get to play. All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed. Don't forget to share anything that you have, your passions in my creative year. We would love to see what they are, okay? And don't forget to have fun. Let me bring you back to this one. This is one of my favorites. Don't forget to have fun. That's what life's all about. Happy creating, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.